Welcome to BC Outdoor Sport Fishing with your host Mike Mitchell. BC Outdoor Sport Fishing is brought to you by your Toyota BC dealers, Rapala, Kingfisher, Yamaha, and the Pacific Salmon Foundation. Welcome everybody to BC Outdoor Sport Fishing. I'm your host, Mike Mitchell. Today we're fishing with Brian Riddle from the Pacific Sound Foundation. Brian, welcome to the show. Oh, glad to be here. And Snor Moran from the Pacific Sound Foundation as well. Thank you, good to be here. And we can't forget our lovely guest host. We'll be in the backdrop, but our kind of our guy is Mike Fortmiller from Shearwater too, so he'll be grabbing the boat and showing us where we're going. But Brian, tell me a little bit about what you do for the Pacific Sound Foundation. Well, right now I have the honor of actually being the president of the foundation. And so my first trip to Shearwater, Excited to be here and looking forward to it. Awesome. Sonora? I work in the recreational fishing programs okay. and me too. First time here. Excited to be here. Nice. Awesome. And we are up in Shearwater, which is the mecca for fishing, I like to call it. I mean, my boat's stored up here most of the year, so I get a chance to come up two or three times a year. Spoiled rotten, and I'm excited to show you guys the fishery up here. And I'm going to guarantee fish today. Well, first trip to uh, Central Coast, BC, Bella Bella. I'm Glad to hear a guarantee is coming. It'll live up to the billing. Great. All right, let's get in the boat. Great, Do it. Thanks. All right. First fish of the day. Think Beautiful. it's a keeper? I don't know. We'll see. We will see. Oh, that's a Chinook, isn't it? Yeah, that's a Chinook. Yeah. Is it? Let's go, guys. Oh, let's go. go. Big hook on him. There we go. Oh. There he's going. <laughs> he's just waking up now. Beautiful fish. <laughs> little scrapper. Yeah, I, know. I like that, actually. I like it when they scrap like that. It's fine. OK. Oh, look at that hook on Oh, that that's though. a big one. So what do you think? My first uh, coho at Shearwater. This is fabulous. Thanks, Mike. First salmon of the year, maybe? <laughs> yeah, I think so. <laughs> These are nice coho. That's beautiful. I think it's the biggest coho I've ever caught. All right. All right. There we oh, go. There goes. Beautiful. Look at the jump on that guy. We got a nice, probably a nice coho on here again, Brian. But one of the things we, we were talking about off camera here is just a bit of history of the PSF. So I think it'd be great to have a discussion on, you know, fill in our viewers on we are? a little bit of who we are and what we do for that. Well, the Salmon Foundation is a charitable organization that really supports community groups working to produce these guys. To yeah. Awesome. Look at the jump. Yeah. So, so over 25 years of our history. Yeah. We've actually now provided 34 million dollars to communities. There you and go. That. Yeah. And they've actually turned that into about $135 million worth of work. Wow. All right, so that's one of the real success stories that I like about the foundation. Yeah. And that, so. Yeah, he's gonna jump around and splash the camera for us. Sorry about that. Yeah, that's nice. So <laughs> yeah. Please give him some, he's still give him some line if he's us. good to go. A nice little coho. Yeah, beautiful. So we'll just tire him out a bit. You're right up at the top there. Awesome. So you want to take this one, Brian? Would you like this one for your freezer? He looks like he's probably got a little bit of life in him. Yeah, he's not ready yet, though. He's not ready. I'll grab the net, though. Well, the Salmon Foundation, for example, is the organization that talks about bringing them back stream by stream. And that's because we work with local community groups that put a ton of effort into their community rivers. Yeah. And, that, and there's, of course, lots of work to be done in habitat restoration. And so well, that's what we've tried to focus on for 25 years. But now we're kind of growing and getting more into larger science programs. Just lift them up. Is that Brian? Lift the rod tip up. And that. Oh, no, we're not ready yet. There he is. OK. So over the next few years, you're going to hear about the foundation continuing work with communities, but also being more actively involved in a lot of the larger science programs, yeah. such as restoring production of coho and Chinook in the Strait of Georgia, for yeah. example. But to do that, we need money. Yeah. And the big initiative we have there is the recreational 
the conservation stamp. Okay, yes. And that. So every angler fishing in the tidal waters of BC yep. have to actually buy the salmon stamp. Okay. And a dollar out of every six comes back to the Pacific Salmon Foundation. And that. So, but we have an initiative now to try and get all the money back so that we can do more work. Exactly, yeah. For BC salmon. Yeah. So the dollar that you guys get back from each license and stuff, what kind of projects do you guys put that money into? Like we put that money into the community groups. Yeah. So every year that's about $350,000 that the recreational fishery provides to the foundation. Yeah. But right now we still only fund less than half of the community programs that really deserve funding. Oh, okay. All right. So that's why we still need to yeah. keep the initiative going. Yeah. Yeah, of course. So. You ready to see this guy? Yeah, sure. It's a beautiful fish. It's a beautiful fish. Oh, gorgeous. We have a lovely little female coho. Nice right. fish, Brian. So, beautiful fish. And that. Yeah. Oh, good. Well, let's put this in the box okay. and let's keep watching these rods because I have a because feeling we're in the right spot. We're in the hot spot now. There's more BC Outdoors sport fishing right after this break. Closed captioning is provided by Ace Line Hauler, the only prawn trap puller built West Coast tough. Wow. Look at that. That is awesome. Awesome. See that we're like right underneath the cliff almost. Yeah. Yeah, wanna take it? Oh, he's out of the water! We got a jumper! Oh. Nora, let's talk about your role with the Pacific Sound Foundation. Absolutely. Oh, there he is. Oh, nice, nice fish. Absolutely. So what I participate, I help out with is called the Recreational Fishing Program. Okay. And what it does is it get, I, we get partners across the province that are guides and lodges. And what they do is they help give back to the resource that they benefit from. Okay. So, for example, they put up ways for their guests to donate. Okay. So one way, ooh, nice. Nice. One way of getting the guests to donate is if we put up easels. Yes which are original paintings done by local artists that we make images from. Yep. We frame them up and people can bid on them. Okay. okay, so guests can bid on the the print, so it's a silent auction type of process. Yep. And the other way of doing it is some lodges and guides do a per guest contribution, what we call sure. a conservation contribution. Sure. So what they do is they get their guests to put in like $25, $10, oh, nice, nice jumper, and or whatever amount that they see fit for their, their company, right? Okay. And so what that does is any of the money that we raise for, from the easels or from the contribution mm -hmm. goes back to volunteer hat trees and habitat restoration groups. Okay. So it's a great way to, to preserve yeah, for sure. the one, like look at us today, right? Yep. Here we are fishing and that's the help from so many people yep. that give back to the resource. Yeah, excellent. So we encourage those lodges and guides who are not in the program to give us a call and check it get out. Involved, yeah. And get involved, absolutely. Yeah, and I, you know what, I think that nine times out of ten, the majority of guests don't mind paying that little bit extra, especially when it goes back into a resource that they're absolutely. coming up and taking part in. A lot of I, I attend a lot of trade shows, and a lot of times when I talk to sports fishermen, what they say is, you know, I didn't know that was happening, sure. or I love to give, and you know, nine times out of ten, people do want to give back. Should I let out a line for you? What do you want to do with this guy? Well, since we're low on fish in the freezer, Here let's invite go. him on board. All right, let's do that then. I'll just grab that net. Mike's going to do that. Nice fish. Not bad, not bad. The regulations up here state we're allowed four fish per day. Yes, we are. So coho I think I got especially. one in the bucket, and this will be my allowed second. Allowed four coho a day, I should say. All right, so you can, Snor, you can reel in and then lift your rod tip up, and we'll swim them in. Oh, that's a nice fish. There we go. I think she's got you on this one again, Brian. I don't know what's going on. No, no, no. That's a teeny. <laughs> Come on. I should have passed the rod to you on this one. This was an upsize uh -huh. for you. All right. So I'll just, I'm going to, what I'll do is I'll just unbutton the clip here, the leader, and the boat. Oh, it's a nice sized fish. So well, Mike, just, I think we're catching some good sized coho today. Beauty. Yeah. Actually, yeah. honestly, coho are one of my favorite eating fish. Yeah, they're very good, aren't they're they? They're really good. Yeah. Absolutely. This will look good Talk. on my uh, barbecue. Yes. Look good on your plate, too. <laughs> Beautiful. Mark's Thanks, giving Mike. the box to your friends right on. Learning with the pros. Brought to you by your Toyota BC dealers. We thought we'd talk today about catch and release of salmon. Anybody fishing salmon today needs to know how to properly release a fish, whether it's because of size limits or certain species that you can retain or you can't retain. The big thing is to reduce the stress by not overplaying the fish. Bring it to the boat as quickly as you can, and then you're going to have to make a decision whether you can release the fish in the water, which is preferred, 
or whether you'll have to lift it on board. If you're releasing the fish in the water, then learn how to use a gaff to go down the line and to rotate the barbless hook out of the fish without any handling at all in the water. That is by far the best way to do it. If you have to bring it on board, then try to use a knotless soft mesh net. Never grab a fish by the tail and hold it up. Never grab it by the gills and lift it. Always hold it by the rear, uh, the caudal peduncle, the tail, preferably with a soft glove, lift it under the head, and then you're properly supporting the fish so you can release it. Don't throw a fish overboard. Lift the fish into the water and hold it with your glove hand on the tail. And if it's moving quickly, then you can release it. If it needs to resuscitate itself for a couple of seconds, it will come back and then you can just release it and it should swim away. If the fish is bleeding and you are legally allowed to retain the fish, that should be done to sustain the resource. Don't release a bleeding fish if you can actually retain it legally. If you're prepared to release fish with the proper equipment and you follow these simple tips, then you can feel good about releasing a salmon because they have a very high likelihood of surviving. If you want to know more about tips like these, you should visit the show's website for other information. Field, Ryan. Oh. So, you can just keep that pressure on. So, I got the catch and release on go. Brian. We're gonna <clears throat> probably release this little guy here, but let's talk a little oh. bit more about the connection between the recreational sector and, and the PSF in general. Well, I mean, the, the, the recreational sector and PSF have been together since the very, very beginning. I mean, over 25 years, the recreational sector has been great support for us. That. So, it's a relationship that we like to maintain over time because it's really part of the root of us. Turn your rod a bit that way. Keep on that side. Well, perfect. Good job. Sorry. This guy looks like a little one to grow some more, so we could yeah. let this guy go possibly. Yeah, that's a good one to good one to yeah. release. And he's a fighter. Yeah. He's a he or she. Guy. Yeah. And the recreational sector is involved every year because of the conservation staff. Yeah. What I'll do is once we get him a little more tired out, I'll get you just to back over to the back of the boat, and I'll grab the the leader, and I'll control the leader, and I'll bring him in. I'll tail him and then I'll pop the hooks and we'll have a little quick view and we'll, we'll dip him back in the water real quick because he's still pretty fresh. Fresh, yeah. And we could probably let him go without even being harmed here. And if we're releasing fish, we want to minimize the stress on exactly. him. Exactly, yeah. Right, so I got a nice soft mesh glove on it. Just gives me a little firmer grip so I don't have to uh, rip out all the scales and squeeze too hard. It is just nice and comfy down there. I didn't like that. It's okay, I'll try it again here. Okay, so I just got him by the tail here, folks. Real nice, I'm gonna pop that hook out. Brian, if you give me a, just a little bit of slack. And there's the hooks out, single barbless tandem hooks there. And there's that fish there, folks. Brian, you have a look at your beautiful co here. There's a beautiful one, look at that. Awesome. Okay, I'm just gonna put him back in here. I'm just gonna hold him until I feel a nice kick from him. And he's ready to go, look at that. Gone. Easy peasy. Done. Nicely done. Yeah, awesome. So there you go. So we do a quick catch and release and we'll get these rods back in and maybe catch another couple fish. What do you think? Good idea. All Good right. Idea. There's more BC Outdoors sport fishing right after this break. Let's get back on the water with BC Outdoors sport fishing. No, Mike, Mike. So Brian, in the news lately, I mean it's August, we had that we had some great news in the, in, the, in the paper about the the big Chinook being caught out in uh, 
Rivers Inlet, but typically some of the, the mainstream media, it's, it's doom and gloom. And that's not always the best message out there, right? And it, it does affect all that is, oh, look at him fly around here. <laughs> Little screamer going across the boat back here. Oh, he's back, look at him go. I can't even keep up to him. This is awesome. Well, it's actually a really good point, Mike, because the mixed message is really difficult for people to understand. But I always tell people that the state of salmon really involves two critical points. Yeah. One's the abundance or the production that we see, and that fluctuates every year with the environment. Yeah. Right. But that's what people really stress is the state of salmon frequently. And that the truth of the matter is that the resource base is all the diversity of populations throughout BC. And that's in surprisingly good shape. I mean, yeah. We don't have the abundance that we used to, but we have the vast majority of all of the spawning populations. And, yeah. that, and yes, we have problems with particular places, no question about that. Sure. Right? But we really do need to keep the message balanced because if it's all negative, it's very difficult to get a really positive response from people that want to put money back to the resource. Exactly, yeah. Right? You and really can't be a defeatist on the whole thing. No, and there's nothing worse than you know, re open up the local paper or the national paper and reading about a run being closed and everybody automatically assumes that well if one runs closed the whole coast of British Columbia yeah. is shut down and it just that's not the message we need to get out and that's 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 where I think some of those some of the guys that are doing the writing need to be that's held a little nice bit fish. more accountable but yeah well the general over generalization is really dangerous yeah and that and it, it does take time for that message to be corrected yeah right so yeah we, we try to really give a sort of a overall impression not just emphasize one particular group of fish that's in trouble yeah uh, awesome. This guy is right here. Okay, yeah, I'll bring him to you. Okay, you ready? perfect. Absolutely. All right. So as soon as you get that bottom of the bag, I'll get his head up, turned in, reach out, nice six foot handle, nice. That's a nice one. Awesome. Nice fish. Great stuff. <laughs> nice fish. Oh, there we go. Nice fish. And now, here are all the secrets of our tackle and gear. Hello folks, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the gear that we've been using on today's episode. We start out with the 10 foot 6 uh, classic moochie rods. This is the moderate, fast action, medium light. Paired it up with our North Coast NC1 mooching reels. And the line on here today is Suffix Elite 25 pound test. Okay, went down, from there went down to some various Coyote flashers. This one seems to be the ticket right now, this is a popular choice around these, these waters. And then we've also been using for the leader, 6 foot 30 pound fluorocarbon suffix line. And Mike, you can talk a bit about from there, eh? Yeah, so today we're using uh, anchovies as well as cut plug herring. So for the anchovies, we're using the bullet roll. Sure. And then also then the anchovy special. Both so by Reese Davis. Both by Reese Davis. Yep. And then, so we've got the uh, 2X strong Gamagatsu treble hook. And then with a the stinger, it's a five out. Uh, of course, all barbless. And then for the cut plug herring, again, a six foot leader, utilizing the, uh, the fluorocarbon. And these are five odd black gamagatsus. Cool. And we're going to talk a little bit about the bait now. This is this is really unique what we're doing this here today. We decided we're going to give this a try, and it, and it works. Um, I'm sold. We're using uh, Procure Sense. We're using the badass bait dye. And this is the chartreuse lime. And basically, it is out of this world. Bright green. So we've done our anchovies and our herring. So we're doing our cut plugs in it as well, yep. and also our teaser heads anchovies coming in here. And I'm going to grab one. I'm going to. Be able to wash this off my hand, but you can have a quick look here, folks. There is the bait the way it comes out. And basically what this bait does, it's got a little scent. I've added a little UV flash as well to That's it right. too. So it yep. glows underwater and uh, it's it well, works it's amazing. Well. You know, we started off just with the regular cut plug, anchovies and the in the teaser heads. Yep. And then gave it a bit, popped off one down, you know, with the uh, with the badass. Sure. And then bang. Bang. Also can't forget about the 2425 Kingfisher we're sitting on right now. Great boat for these waters. I have lots of fun. 225 Yamaha, all the low rants equipment, a Gen 2 10 inch. We're dialed right in. The Scotty high performance downriggers. Yep. Anyway, these are these are crucial items for this fishery as we'll, we'll see today. But folks, we're gonna flash up a quick list for you. Grab your pen and paper, take some notes, and hopefully this will help you be successful on the water as well. All Tackle and Gear is available at Steveston Marine and Hardware. There, there you go. Oh, nice one. 
Oh, like this is a nice big Friday. So this is can, a good uh, Late August up here in Shearwater is a fantastic coho fishery. Look at him up there. Oh, there a, that's another brute, Brian. She scooped the rod again. <laughs> okay, well, she's not taking too home. It's no, actually uh, exciting. It's pretty oh, good. Oh, yeah, it's awesome. We can see him flipping back to the flasher. So let's talk a bit about the coho fishery. Absolutely. Coho in general, right? Yes. They're pretty fantastic. And then when they smolt, or meaning they return to the ocean again, they spend about an, a year and a half on the ocean. And what's really fabulous is once they start to put on the pounds before they spawn, yep. They eat non-stop. So it's not uncommon for a lot of fishermen, probably your viewers have experienced. Yeah. When they get a coho on line, they'll have two herring tails sticking oh, yeah. out of their mouth and then a, ooh, 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 a plug. Look on this guy, he's a big fish. Well, I was saying earlier, you know, a month ago I was up here and the fish were eight to 10 to 12 pounds would be a good one up yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. You know, we're up here looking for good Chinook. Now we're getting fish that are 16 to, 16 to 20 pounds. It's just- you know, think about how much they're eating to get that weight yeah. on, right? And, the, and then the beautiful thing about oh, about coho is where they spawn are these small, tiny little tributaries off of main salmon streams. Yeah. So they really go through low waters, high waters, falls, falls and everything, right? All right, well, another great coho up on the central coast of BC here. Fishing with Mike up at Shearwater again, and I want to thank you guys especially for coming out. Brian Snore from Pacific Sound Foundation, great supporters of the show. And you guys do such great work that it's, uh, you know, we, we, we've, we've talked about some great messaging on this show mm -hmm. and it really hits home for what, what these people need to do to be involved and, and what, we're, what we're all about, right? So it's, uh, it's an integral part of this fishery and people need to realize that, right? So again, thank you guys for coming up. Again, Brian Snora, thanks Brian, I'll shake right. your hand. Snora, I'm not gonna shake your hand because you're covered in fish slime. I'll give you a little bop and make it explode. Bop. Thanks for having us, Mike. It was no fantastic. problem. Yeah, thanks, no. Mike. And we'll uh, thank you folks for joining us on another episode of BC Outdoor Sport Fishing. We look forward to having you join us again at, uh, at the next episode. Also, stay tuned. During the credits, we're going to run some questions sent in by viewers from Facebook and Twitter, and Brian and Sonori have a chance to answer those for us. BC Outdoors Sport Fishing has been made possible by your Toyota BC dealers. Rapala, crafted from experience. Yamaha, what kind of Yamaha are you? Kingfisher, fish the good times. The Pacific Salmon Foundation, bringing them back stream by stream along with next question and final question is from todd martin are all hatchery raised fish fin clipped for easy identification if not why not well i can answer that one with my background in canada all our hatchery marked fish usually have a code wire tag chinook salmon specifically and to code wire tag and fin clip adipose fin clip that many salmon is just dependent on cost good easy answer all right, folks, make sure you send in your questions and answers or questions to Facebook and Twitter, and we'll answer those for you on our next episode.